it makes a little bit of a difference, but nothing that's going to be majorly critical in graphing the problem. So the first thing, um, what I'm going to do, all right, for doing a problem like this to graph sine is exactly what we did for sine and cosine. We have to be able to figure out the exact same pieces of information. It's the exact same thing over and over and over and over again, Israel. So all you guys got to do is write it down and get studied on how to keep on finding this piece of information. Because you should, Connor, get so good at finding this that there should not be any issues when you guys come in and have to take your test because you have to do this for every single one of those problems. All right? Amplitude. What I love about amplitude for tangent and cotangent is there is no restrictions on how high that graph goes and how far it goes down. The graph approaches the asymptotes. All right? So therefore, there's no restrictions, so there's no a a amplitude. That's the easiest one to get done. The period. I told you guys we changed the period from pi divided by b. It only takes a distance of pi for the tangent and cotangent for it to repeat itself. So in this case, I look at this and I have pi divided by pi. So therefore, my period is equal to 1. Hmm. Interesting. OK. Next one, the x scale. The x scale, again, for my class, actually, I'm going to do this. Uh, x scale divided by 2. All right, well, pi divided by b is 1 divided by 2. So it's just equal to 1 half. All right? Now, it will be noted, it will be helpful for me to show you this. If you want to do the old x scale, that's 1 fourth. That's just including extra tick marks. And I'll show you, I'll tell you what I'm talking about for this in a second. OK, so now let's go ahead and find our vertical transformation. You know, am I being added anywhere up or down on this? No. So therefore, vertical transformation is none. And my phase shift, I just take what's inside my function, and I set it equal to 0, divide by pi, x equals 0. So therefore, it's none. So therefore, there's no vertical transformation. All right, so let's go ahead and graph. Okay, Now remember, tangent, untouched, the, co the um, parent graph of tangent, untouched, has an x-intercept at y equals 0. Right? Then the next scale is the asymptote, and the next scale is the asymptote. So what is my x scale? 1 half. I'll talk about this x scale in a second. My next x scale is 1 half. So therefore, that's 1 half is where my next asymptote is. And that's negative 1 half. So do you guys see how my x scale, every scale, that's the next x-intercept, the next asymptote, next x-intercept, next s asymptote. Each one of these um, each one of these is going to be one half away from each other. That's how I use the x scale. All right? And you guys could do this in the negative direction as well, if that's what you like to do. You don't always have to do it in the positive. You could subtract 1 half, too. So the next point would be negative 1, negative 3 halves. All right? You can keep on going in the negative direction. Now, for you guys to graph this, all I'm expecting you guys to do is to go ahead and connect them with the asymptotes and make sure they cross. All right? However, as I mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, this value does affect your graph what it looks like. If this value was 1, remember I told you the x scale, original x scale? That would mean this point and that point. Traditionally, that means without, traditionally at this point, um, when you're graphing, our first two points go down to negative 1 and up to positive 1. That's what the parent graph would look like, something like this. All right. But now, how is this negative 2 going to affect this? Well, what I can do is for each one of my quarter points, I can do is I can evaluate this. So I can say y equals negative 2 times tangent, tangent of pi times 
uh, pi over 4, x times what? x over, that's tangent, 2 tangent. What am I thinking? Oh, I'm sorry, not pi, of just pi over 4. And if I go ahead and evaluate this, if I plug this in, tangent of pi over 4 is what? 1, yes, times negative 2. So that means now these points go down to negative 2 and positive 2. So the graph is actually going to be much skinnier. All right. So what happens is the absolute value of that 2, it doesn't really change so much as far as where the asymptote is or where the x-intercept is. But since that value, the absolute value is greater than 1, that's going to make your graph much skinnier. All right? And if the absolute value was less than 1, your graph would be much wider. It would look, you know, it'd go closer up. But anyway, so now I, now I just kind of know my graph is pretty skinny. And again, I'm not going to be very specific on you guys, but just wanted to kind of make sure everybody was at least aware of how to graph. So therefore, that's an example of graphing your tangent function. Okay? And there you go.